In this video, we're going to talk about how we deal with noise when trying to extract the ERP signal from the EEG. By noise, I don't mean sounds, I mean random fluctuations in the EEG. We use signal averaging to deal with these random fluctuations. The more trials we have, the more random activity will average out, leaving us with a beautiful ERP waveform. But this leads to an important question. How many trials do you need to average together? Well, most questions like this have what I like to call a two-word answer that begins with it and ends with depends. In this case, it depends on the size of the signal relative to the size of the noise, the signal-to-noise ratio. Depending on the experiment, we might need 10 trials or we might need 1,000 trials to get an acceptable signal-to-noise ratio. Here's an example where we have only 8 trials, which isn't even close to enough in most experiments. This experiment used an oddball paradigm in which subjects pressed one of two buttons on each trial to indicate whether the stimulus was an X or an O. The O's were rare, so we call those the oddball stimuli. Here we're showing the EEG epics from eight oddball trials. You can see a lot of variation from trial to trial, but all eight trials have a positive voltage from approximately 300 to 600 milliseconds. That's the P3 wave, which is a very large positive component that you get for oddballs in this paradigm. Here you can see the average of the eight oddball epics. We actually had way more than eight oddballs, but I wanted you to see what it looks like if you have a small number of trials. You can see the P3 wave, a broad positivity from approximately 300 to 600 milliseconds. In this particular example, the P3 is huge, about 25 microvolts. It's way bigger than the noise in the pre-stimulus interval. But this is an unusual situation. Usually an ERP component is only a few microvolts, and we're looking for differences between conditions that might be less than one microvolt. So we usually need way more than eight trials. For example, this P2 wave isn't any bigger than the noise in the pre-stimulus period. If the signal isn't any bigger than the noise, it's going to be hard to find statistically significant differences between conditions or groups. Now, if we make some simple assumptions, it turns out that the signal to noise ratio will increase in proportion to the square root of the number of trials. So doubling the number of trials from 8 to 16 would only increase the signal to noise ratio by 41%, because 1.41 is the square root of 2 we'd need to quadruple the number of trials to double the signal-noise ratio, because the square root of 4 is 2. So, we'd need 32 trials to double the SNR that we get with 8 trials. Increasing the number of trials doesn't change the signal, it just decreases the noise. So, if we quadruple the number of trials to double the SNR, this would effectively cut the noise in half. The square root rule can be a major source of frustration when you're designing an ERP experiment. You can only quadruple the number of trials so many times before the experiment becomes impractical. As a result, the ERP technique is usually limited to paradigms where you can get at least a few dozen trials from each subject in each condition.